Hi guys, this is Abhishek. Today we are going to discuss about uh, acceptance test driven development (ATDD). Um, in most of the MNC companies, we are following this one. Um, so, but also I have seen like uh, when the people are coming for interviews, right? Uh, they say agile, but um, there are different levels of maturity uh, we have in agile. Um, let's discuss one by one what they are. And in some of the companies, they will be having a rally or Jira uh, for this uh, agile culture, what they are uh, uh, following. <coughs> so we have a user stories, right? And uh, um, so for each and every user stories, we will be having a acceptance criteria. Um, the reason why I talked about the maturity is like, when we see in some of the companies the acceptance criteria like I can say they will write up the heading like uh, just validate so and so fields uh, in some of the they will leave up the heading only um, the developers and uh, QA, uh, QA should get it clarified and they should start writing the test cases or development in so in that case it will be very difficult right um say in stand up call we are discussing about the user story and developer may understand in different perspective and uh, testers may uh, understand in this pr uh, different perspective so uh, there will be a uh, misconception of the particular user story uh, both will be deviated right so <coughs> so let's say uh, why we are going first of all acceptance test driven development why we are going to that one uh, we can do it manually also uh, in uh, Agile. But thing is like for each PI, let's say for one release we have certain PIs or pro PI is nothing but again a program increment. Each program increment at the starting of the things uh, they will be discussing what user stories or uh, we are going to pull up uh, for that particular PI. And let's say for each PI, there will be a based on the company again, um, there will be differentiation of it. In our company, it is a four sprints. Uh, so each sprint again will be a two weeks. Okay. Let's say in each sprint, I am taking a six user stories. Um, in a four sprints, around 24 user stories. It is a one month release. So this PI is a one month release. So within two months, I am going using 24 user stories. Okay. So if I do it manually, right? So each sprint, I need to do it manual, right? The manual test cases, okay? For that one in ALM or whatever the um, uh, tools they are using for manual test cases, okay? You are writing 24 user stories and you need to test them. Again, uh, after this PI, you will be having a regression, right? Um, you need to do one round of regression. Again, you need to execute this one. So think about it like for two months you are having this much of efforts if it is like four to five, five uh, PIs it will be around 100 user stories you are uh, approximately 100 user stories you are going to test manually and lot of uh, regression efforts also you will be keeping yeah so uh, we it will be very difficult for you to do uh, to do this regression and uh, user stories manually execute that one with a limited QA. Let's say for uh, depending on the uh, uh, depending on the agile team, there will be two or three max on some of the agile teams. Let's say in our company it means I am only the tester. So it will be very difficult for, uh, for us like uh, um, to do this in this way. We can do it, but chances of leaking defects is more in this way okay and this is non ATDD means we are not fall if we are not following ATDD how the process will be like requirements from the business and then developer will uh, code for those requirements then manual test are going to write uh, manual test cases so so what I'm saying why where the misconception are against like let me share okay okay so here what I am telling is right. <coughs> so acceptance criteria in some of the companies very limited. They will write header and they will leave it off that you should get it clarified in your stand up call asking what exactly they are speaking about that one you know, what need to be like um, you should analyze the things for that user story. 
so it will take lot of your efforts to analyze the user story and bring back all the positive and negative scenarios right they will be also uh, asking the same questions in the stand up call so it may be chances that <coughs> whatever the development they are doing the manual testers may write a different um, uh different manual test cases uh, means they can there may be chances of uh, uh, having a uh, misconceptions of that requirements right so in that way either of those can happen so there may be chances of uh, um, defect leakages in these scenarios right so if you are if testers are not understood correctly there may be chances of this one and also uh, it will be very hectic work also to get it clarified what exactly requirements uh the developer or manual tester uh to do right mm, so after that again our manual regression phase i i spoke about this 24 user stories again we need to execute them manually and finally deployment and another good thing is like <coughs> it is not a single uh, environment we are dealing we are dealing with multiple in some of the companies there will be six environments also but in my um, company for one of the project we have q test or qa stage and prod environments so once we test all these things right 24 user stories that will be deployed to stage okay before this final deployment to the prod they will be deployed to stage okay again you need to test it manually 24 user stories in a stage that is a one round of regression again okay so that that after that final prod also you need to um uh, after uh, after deployment there will be like uh, we need to check your user stories in a prod um they are working correctly or not you need to give a sign off on a prod right there will be a release call uh, so in that call you need to say once the production is done uh, in the same call you will be testing the this 24 user stories using atdd what we are trying to minimize here okay we will see those you can see here PO, Dev, SDET, UAT, all will be involved in a, during the requirements phase, right? So, and here it is like one line acceptance criteria. But here you will be getting a more information on that one. What exactly that requirement is speaking, right? All will be involved. All will be on same page. After all confirmation only, we'll get a one consolidated requirement. Okay. so in that way it will be very very uh, all 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 can stand in a one phase one line okay so the for the same requirements developer will be doing the development and tester will be doing a automated testers uh, so here we are doing a in sprint automation right so automated test cases so the same will be validated and automated regression the same features what we developed for in sprint automation that we can be used for automated regression and during the deployment phase as well until unless you are not using the um, real time data in deployment if you have a uh, duplicated data that you can use in a prod version so in that way we can minimize lot of manual efforts and uh, very most thing is like misconception of the requirements by the different people and so all people will be involved in a requirements but accepting that particular user story will be done by the po so this is uh, all like again acceptance test driven development right we have bdd and tdd okay so it's a, a combination of bdd behavior driven development and tdd so this automation i will be explaining in upcoming videos the high level uh, what is the use of this atdd uh, i am giving the overview of this one yeah thanks guys for watching if you like the video please like share and subscribe